Allen as we're coming to close NBAA 2015. It's been an interesting week. A little bit of disruptive stuff here and there. That's been kind of fun. Not a whole lot of great news overall. Some airplanes are selling, but it seems like the bottom end of the jet market is starting to see some activity, and it seems to be centered around One Aviation. Boy, that's good news for you guys, isn't it? Well, good morning. I, I wouldn't say it's centered around it. One of the great things about this show is a, is a chance to see all of the industry here in one place, and, and there are a lot of interesting things going on. In terms of One Aviation in particular, obviously, yeah, we, we feel very good about how the show has gone for us. A lot of interest, a lot of good sales activities, some announcements we've made. But overall, just sort of a change in the general atmosphere of how people are looking at what airplanes they would buy, how they would use them. Let's talk about recent additions to the order book. Well, recent additions, obviously, the one was the announcement that we put out about Jingong, our partner in China, that has ordered 20 airplanes for staggered deliveries over the next few years. But we feel just as good about sort of the broad nature of the orders, which include some European orders. We've now got some EASA good news with the certification there and activity in the U.S. as well. So we think it's pretty well spread out. What do you think of Jamal Larkin's project to start putting these into a fractional that he started with a piston single project and is now working his way up to twin jets? Yeah. A lot of people know Jamal. Great guy. You know, very visionary in terms of his views on how people get into and how they use aviation. From a one aviation point of view, we think that there's a really a wide variety of how these airplanes can get used. And one of the reasons we like Jamal's project so much is because it's different. It's how do we use higher performance transportation but still in sort of a fractional personal model. So we're very excited about those orders. Well, with the infusion of these orders and obviously some more coming down the pike, what's the production line looking like for 16 and 17 at this point? 17 is a long ways away, but for 16, it'll still be a slow ramp up. We're making a lot of internal changes in terms of efficiency at the company as well, the Albuquerque site. So delivery will look something like 12, 14, 16 airplanes for next year of new 550s. But then, of course, the other thing we're interested in is the way we're doing the, what we call the SE, which is a refurbished, rebuilt airplane, where we strip down an old Eclipse 500, put all the new stuff in it that would effectively make it a 550, except starting with a completed airframe. Are there any unmodified Eclipse 500s left out there? It's interesting that you would put it that way. There are actually a few completely unmodified airplanes. But now, six months or so into One Aviation, I'm still confused about the variety of modified Eclipse airplanes. One of the things that the company has done, and I believe not gotten sufficient credit for in its previous iteration prior to One Aviation, is they've fixed a lot of the problems. They've added a lot of upgrades and constantly offered those to the existing customers. So there's this whole wide variety of versions of upgraded Eclipses. We'll gradually try and standardize that. It'll be easier for us to support those customers, but it's been an interesting track record. Any action on the turboprop front? Turboprop front is slow. Obviously, we're very excited, committed to the Kestrel. I think it's a great airplane for a great market. You see, obviously, a lot of other interest in that market and some great existing airplanes and some other potentially new ones. It's a different market than the Eclipse. The way I normally describe it is that if you have a shorter runway or particularly a, a grass runway at either end, then the Eclipse won't do it for you. If you want to carry a big load in and out of a short runway, something like a Kestrel is more appropriate. Having said that, obviously funding is always an issue in terms of development programs. So it's on the slow track to getting finished. And we'll keep working with a variety of different financial partners and prospective partners on that. Obviously, there will continue to be changes to the airplane as well. One of the things we announced this week is that we were back to looking for a final engine selection. Alan Klapmeyer, thanks for joining us in the final day, MBAA 2015. We look forward to seeing you down the line the next convention, which is probably in about two hours. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, uh, it's been a great show, and it's good to see you. Take care, guys. Thank you. Aero TV is brought to you by Today's pilots must have power for electronic flight bags, tablets, iPads, and communication devices. The TA-102 dual USB charging port delivers more power with less hassles. Available from your local avionics dealer.